Can a plant be good while still being incredibly niche? Or is the fact that it's so situational what makes it bad? Well, that really depends on who you ask. Some believe that a plant is better based on its usability, while others believe that the balancing of the plant itself is more important. I'm part of the latter, and if you know me, you know I tend to focus more on the stats. However, there are always exceptions. You saw the title and thumbnail, so you know who I'm talking about. Magnetroom is a plant which I really don't know how to feel about. While its ability is quite simple, it's very different from every other plant as it attracts and destroys metal objects. However, its viability may be few and far between. Magnetroom was definitely forgotten during PvZ2's lifespan, and PopCap developers could have done a lot more with it. So, I'm here to answer the question that nobody asked. How good is Magnetroom? Magnetroom is one of the many plants unlockable in Plants vs. Zombies 2. Originating in PvZ1, you unlock it during your adventure run, more specifically after completing Dark Ages Night 15. It has a sun cost of 100 sun, and has a 15 second seed packet recharge. Its ability is an incredibly unique one that no other plant has, that being that, one at a time, it attracts a metal object off of a zombie and destroys it. Its magnetic pole has a 5x7 detection range and takes 10 seconds to fully rid of the object. Its plant food attracts up to 20 metal objects and then throws them back at the zombies. Each one does 300 damage, except for Yeti Zombie's head, which does 500 damage, and Punk's head, which won't be thrown at all. For what it does, Magnetrim is a very reliable plant. While its plant food is situational, it can be devastatingly powerful. The only possible issue that one could encounter is its recharge, and that's only because of how Magnet can handle armor one at a time. Otherwise, there's nothing inherently wrong with Magnetrim itself, and in my opinion, that's what makes a plant great or not. At least, that's how I feel about most plants. Magnetroom suffers from a couple key issues, none of which are really its fault. During the making of this video, I made a Google Form survey in my Discord server for the users to fill out. The form itself was in regards to their thoughts on Magnetroom, and one answer by Herpelnerp summarized how I feel perfectly. I quote, the cons with Magnetroom isn't so much Magnetroom himself, but everything around him. In PvZ1, he had a wide variety of metallic objects to steal that didn't only just de-armor a zombie, but could take away their special ability as well. Given that PvZ2 is a significantly larger game, there just isn't enough things to make people feel like Magnetroom is worth using. Now, I've deliberately avoided telling you how many zombies Magnetroom affects up until this point, because I feel it's a pretty large talking point. Out of the hundreds of zombies in PvZ2, Magnetroom only affects these eight. However, Centurion and Carney Imp only appear in Arena and Penny's Pursuit, the Zombot Dark Dragon only appears in one level and is exclusively affected by Magnet's plant food, and yet he doesn't even appear anymore at all. That really leaves you with only four zombies total, those being Buckethead, Poncho, Knight, and Punk. Poncho only has a metal grate half of the time anyway. Aside from Punk and the Dark Dragon, these are exclusively health-related interactions. There is so much more that PopCap could have done in regards to what Magnetroom could counter. For example, Magnet could have taken Fisherman's Hook, MC Zombie's Microphone, Boombox Zombie's Boombox, or Jetpack Zombie's Jetpack. There's unused code for Magnet to pull Bugbot Imp towards it, but I don't think Magnet was actually going to kill it. Still a weird interaction that was left unused. Excavator Zombie literally has unused animations where Magnet steals his shovel, rendering his ability useless. This was likely back when Exca's shovel was still metal, as seen in the screenshot. Though, considering how Magnet can take Jurassic Buckethead's helmet, which is literally just a rock, it should also be able to take the shovel, which is made of gold. I think the most confusing change, though, is how Magnetroom doesn't even affect Football Zombie anymore. Well, All-Star. Whatever, I call it football. Regardless, Magnet doesn't take away Football's helmet anymore, which is such a mind-boggling change because of how it was able to in the first game. I have no idea why they didn't include this interaction in PvZ2. If I had to guess, it could be because of how the helmet doesn't count as armor in this game. Which is weird, because when football was added, armor was considered part of the actual zombie, and not its own separate entity. Or maybe they just forgot to re-add it. Whatever it was, it's still a disappointing result. In general, PopCap seems to have just forgotten that Magnetroom existed. At least until recently, with Magnet being the plan of the week or whatever. Either that, or they intentionally didn't do anything with it, which, in that case, I'd be pretty stunned. That's aside, Magnetroom fares well in actual levels. As it's no longer restricted by Coffee Bean, it's very dependable and easy to use. 
A lot of people in the Google forum mentioned how Magna thrives in his homeworld, Jurassic Ages. What? A lot of people in the Google forum mentioned how Magnet thrives in its homeworld, Dark Ages, due to Buckethead, Knight, and King, which gives peasants without any armor, Knight Helmets. It combines well with a lot of lower damage plants like Spikeweed and Endurian, and splash damage plants like Fumeshroom and Snapdragon. Magnet can also be a great help in later worlds where Buckethead spam is prevalent. To be fair though, you won't know which levels truly spam Bucketheads until you play them, so you may get very little value out of it. Seeing a bunch of bucket heads in the same wave is incredibly rare, especially since dynamic difficulty is no longer a thing, so the moments where Magnet shines may be few and far between. The only other three adventure zombies encounters are each in up to two worlds at most, one of those zombies you run into before you unlock Magnet, so you won't be getting too much usage outside of those worlds except for with bucket heads. Even if Magnet could do all these things, such as nerf football, fisherman, excavator, and everyone I mentioned before, it would still suffer from the fact that other plants are simply just more efficient in achieving the same end goal. There are virtually no circumstances in which bringing Magnet is better than an insta-kill, which armor doesn't affect, supporters, whether it be walls or stuns, or just heavy damage dealers. In every world from the one you unlock Magnet in onward, with the exception of Neon Mixtape Tour, there's a zombie with an HP stat of either close to or higher than Buckethead's, so it's likely that you have enough to sheer power through them anyway. Plus, zombies like Buckethead's aren't even too threatening in the first place. They should be the least of your worries as all they are are higher health brown coats. Actually, I'd argue that none of the zombies that Magnet affects aside from Punk are that threatening. Then there are some plants like Shattershroom that just ignore armor entirely. A lot of people in the Google forum felt the same. These are some of the responses I got talking about this issue, all really sharing the same sentiment towards Magnet Shroom. Outside of Dark Ages, Magnet Shroom really just feels like a solution to a non-existent problem. I feel like giving a special spotlight to a certain Chinese-only plant here, that being Acidic Citrus. While not exactly the same as Magnet, and in fact pretty different overall, I still feel that it's the closest thing to it, and thus it isn't entirely unreasonable to give it a mention. I also want to preface that I've never actually used this thing, ever, and there's really not that much information out there on the plant, so I'm going to be pretty brief with this section and I'm basing it entirely off of it conceptually. With that said, Acidic Citrus is a big wave beach plant, which, to my knowledge, is unlocked with the puzzle pieces. It's a straight shooter which does 50 damage to normal zombies, and twice as much damage to zombies with armor. As far as I know, Acidic Citrus affects all of the zombies that Magnetrum does in the international version, while also doing twice as much damage to Shell Zombie. At level 2, Conehead Zombies are also affected by Acidic Citrus. I personally feel that Acidic Citrus and its corrosion gimmick, especially at level 2 and higher, is a lot less situational than Magnetrum. Unlike Magnet, which is restricted to a single ability, Acidic Citrus does the armor removal gimmick in a better way, while still being able to fend off everything else. A lot of people ask what plants from the Chinese version of PvZ2 they would like to see in the international version, and Acidic Citrus is honestly the only one I'd want. I think it'd be a great addition with a lot more potential for PopCap to work with. At the end of the day, whether Magnetrim is good or not is entirely up for you to decide. Personally, the making of this video made me rethink entirely how I thought about Magnet as a whole. Magnet does almost everything right, but is ultimately dragged down by PBZ2's meta, and it depends on what you value in a plant for how you feel about them. I think, though, that we could all agree that Magnetrim could have been a lot more. Maybe one day. Here's to hoping. What do you guys think about Magnetrum? Let me know in the comments. Also, thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers, and for 11,000, and for 12,000. That's absolutely insane for me to think about. Anyways, thanks for watching, and see y'all in the next one.